नमस्कार गुड इवनिंग यू आर वाचिंग राज्यसभा टेलीविजन आई एम स्मृति रस्तोगी विद न्यूज टुनाइट लेट्स बिगिन द बुलेटिन विद द टॉप हेडलाइंस प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी रेजेस पाकिस्तान स्पॉन्सर टेररिज्म विद चाइनीज प्रेसिडेंट शी जिनपिंग थैंक्स हिम फॉर बेजिंग हेल्प इन गेटिंग मसूद अजहर डेजिग्नेटेड एज अ ग्लोबल टेररिस्ट both sides discussed bilateral ties trade and border dispute in talks with the russian president vladimir putin emphasis on strategic partnership enhancing defense cooperation black box bodies of all 13 members on board an32 recovered from crash site aircraft disappeared on 3rd of june on way to jorhat in assam wreckage found a week later in tato area of arunachal pradesh cyclone vayu changes course but cautious gujarat administration retains high alert for coastal areas till friday heavy rains expected in gir somnath junagarh porbandar devbhumi dwarka western railways cancel 77 trains to state isro unveils plan to set up space station after completion of mission gaganyaan in joint press briefing with government on chandrayaan 2 project discloses that efforts to send satellites to venus and sun by 2023 And for the first time in two decades government reduces rate of ESI contribution from 6.5% to 4% over 3.6 crore employees and 12.85 lakh employers to benefit from the decision Our top focus this evening: Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday met Chinese President Xi Jinping on the sidelines of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit at Bishkek and discussed ways to further strengthen the bilateral relations. The issues related to bilateral relations, trade, border dispute, and terrorism were also discussed in the meeting. The role of Pakistan in abetting terrorism was discussed. India said that Pakistan is not serious about its action against terrorism. Prime Minister Narendra Modi also applauded China's help in declaring Masood Azhar as a global terrorist. Prime Minister in fact said that we have a consistent position with respect to Pakistan. We Uh, discuss all issues through a bilateral mechanism and we look for peaceful settlement through negotiation we are committed to this process the prime minister recalled that he has made efforts in this regard and these efforts have been derailed the prime minister did inform president xi jinping that pakistan needs to create an atmosphere free of terrorism and that at this stage we did not see this as happening as yet and that therefore we expect pakistan to take concrete action on the issues that india has proposed on the in the in the areas of concern that we have flagged to pakistan that pakistan should take concrete action in this regard prime minister narendra modi also said that there was a meaningful dialogue with the chinese president both countries agreed to work together to enhance economic and cultural cooperation the prime minister said that due to strategic communication relations between india and china have improved Prime Minister Modi also invited Chinese President Xi Jinping to India for an informal meet this year which he has accepted. Both leaders then did a review of the bilateral relationship and they agreed that there is a new momentum in this bilateral relationship since the Wuhan summit in April last year. the prime minister specifically noted that what had improved between the two sides was strategic communication at all levels and in that context some of the issues that we had been able to resolve 
through that strategic communication included long pending issues like the opening of the bank of china branch in india as well as the resolution of the issue relating to the listing of masood azhar in the 1267 sanctions committee uh, the two leaders agreed that while the outcome of wuhan uh, was a very positive one it was necessary now to move the relationship forward into new areas and therefore the prime minister specifically conveyed to president xi and he agreed that both sides need to raise our expectations from the relationship and in that context the prime minister welcomed president xi jinping to india for the next informal summit the second informal summit after wuhan he said that both sides must prepare very thoroughly for this summit that the outcome of the summit must meet the expectations of both sides and president xi jinping very warmly confirmed his readiness to visit india this year there was also a brief discussion on the boundary issue the two leaders have asked the special representatives to meet and carry forward the discussion and have instructed them to expedite discussions in this regard for achieving a fair reasonable and mutually acceptable solution to the boundary question After this Prime Minister Narendra Modi held a bilateral meeting with the Russian President Vladimir Putin discussions on key issues including bilateral relations defense cooperation and many other important areas were held President Putin specifically recognized Prime Minister's personal contribution in strengthening this relationship he mentioned this on more than one occasion He also specifically said that Russia had conferred its highest award the order of St Andrew the Apostle on our prime minister in recognition of this effort and this uh, um, initiative that prime minister has taken to develop the relationship with Russia Both leaders recognized the special significance of the partnership as an important pillar for stability in the world of the future and there was an understanding that this partnership this relationship is an old relationship it is a relationship based on trust between the leadership and between the people and that this relationship needs to be sustained it needs to be developed it needs to be given further encouragement prime uh, president uh, putin has invited the prime minister formally to be the main guest for the eastern economic forum at vladivostok in early september and prime minister has warmly accepted this invitation so this will be a bilateral visit that prime minister will make to vladivostok in early september as the chief guest for the eastern economic forum and thereafter for the india russia annual bilateral summit and for more inputs on this we'll go across to our correspondent akhilesh suman who is joining us uh, from bishkek akhilesh two important bilateral meetings took place today one with chinese president xi jinping and the other with russian president vladimir putin what was the focus of the discussion with the two leaders you know there are two main focus uh, in the discussion between the two leaders and uh, one of the major focus was naturally terrorism and you know that uh, in the smriti and all has changed in a way that every country is feeling the pinch of terrorism and there is no right time other than this that prime minister should stress that the whole area should be made terror free because uh, the whole sco was formed with a view to give prosperity give progress in the whole region of uh, central asian and uh, other regions surrounding it and uh, this is the issue of terrorism that is you know uh, destroying the whole uh, eagerness for development and prime minister and modi told uh, uh, president xi jinping that terrorism is still an issue and if uh, pakistan wants to talk to india it has to take the first step and what is the first step first step is that you should show the resolve not only show the resolve but you should show that you are acting against terrorism and that act should be visible very visible so uh, in uh, without that there is no scope of any talk because all talks have been meaningless whenever there is a talk there is a terror attack so prime minister has made very clear to chinese president that there is no uh, situation of talk between india and pakistan and he has also told that if you want the success of uh, sco then uh, i think uh, pakistan has to be told to stop terrorism pakistan has to dismantle the you know the infrastructure of terrorism other than that you know trade is an issue and uh, 
you know both uh, india and china are the largest population in the world india is the largest open market largest democracy and china is the largest producer and if uh, both can cooperate uh, there will be no uh, uh, comparison in the world so prime minister told that uh, our expectations should rise and expectations should rise that means you should create a congenial atmosphere so that we can do the trade we can share our experiences and we can uh, 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 create a situation where there should be no one pole in the world where world should uh, move towards multipolarism and i think that uh, president xi jinping has understood this thing and well there will be next informal summit they will work more while uh, uh, russian president vladimir putin is concerned you know that uh, indo russia relationship is normally bracketed into the indo russia defense cooperation and both uh, prime minister nand modi and vladimir putin had been uh, saying for last uh, a few years that this bracket should be re- uh, removed and there should be a normal trade relationship between the two countries encompassing other areas of cooperation the way india exports goods in other countries in other countries yeah. uh, uh, also uh, india should take advantage of this so i think when prime minister nand right. modi is going to vladivostok a delegation will go there before that and also when prime minister will go for summit level meeting and uh, uh, there will be a road map is going to be created that how the cooperation between two countries especially the trade cooperation uh, between the two countries can be expand, expanded in other areas so that the gelling factor is not just defense cooperation but gelling factor should be a all comprehensive you know relationship between the two countries simply right akhilesh thank you so much akhilesh for joining us and giving us all those details from there in bishkek so remember prime minister narendra modi today held two important bilateral meetings with chinese president xi jinping and russian president vladimir putin on the sidelines of the shanghai cooperation organization summit Meanwhile Kyrgyzstan has said that India's entry in SCO has enhanced its value if the Central Asian grouping our correspondent Akhilesh Suman spoke to Kyrgyz ambassador to India exclusively Mr Asim Isaif the ambassador of Kyrgyzstan in India is here with me ambassador prime minister nand modi is coming here many times and your president also went there while oath taking ceremony of prime minister nand modi so what is special between the two countries that uh, there is so much of bon homi uh, first of all uh, now we are two countries that both uh, have sympathy each other we have a lot of joint uh, joint um, common uh, efforts in the region about struggle against terrorism, terrorism about our peaceful uh, in our uh, region but when prime minister is going to talk to president uh, kyrgyz president uh, uh, what do you think uh, and what do you expect from this meeting uh, uh, um, i'd like to open our secret we are expecting a lot okay yes and uh, we hope that during this discussion uh, it will be achieved Uh, agreement about our strategic partnership SCO meeting is also taking place so can you tell me that uh, the way india is trying to you know argue against the menace of terrorism uh, so it is on the right way yes absolutely absolutely you know SCO uh, was uh, first of all not very big it was very uh, very uh, tire mm. objective yeah. just the uh, trust between us in the border now it's huge organization with very big schedule and after entering of india it really became very powerful so there our correspondent akhilesh suman speaking to kyrgyz ambassador to india seen is there exclusively Moving on to some more developments in a huge relief for Gujarat cyclone Vayu on Thursday began moving away from the state coast although the danger of heavy winds and rainfall continued state authorities have already evacuated 3 lakh people from low lying areas near the coast to safer places according to the indian meteorological department heavy rains which lashed the coastal areas were likely to continue as per the latest weather report The cyclone is likely to move north northwards northwestwards for some time and then northwestwards skirting the Saurashtra region 
affecting Gir Somnath, Diu, Junagar, Porbandar and Dwarka with a wind speed of 90 to 100 km per hour gusting to 110 km per hour during the next 12 hours. Due to heavy rains, power supply in several districts has been affected. Train services also remain suspended due to the cyclone, which was earlier expected to make landfall on Thursday afternoon. Girshomnath, Junagar, Diu, Porbandar, the Bhumi Dwarka, wind 135 to 145 km per hour, rahegi, gusting to 160 km per hour, rahegi. sea uh, wave, uh, storm surge rahegi, 0.6 to 1.3 meter tak, uh, affected area. Mein. बारिश हैवी टू वेरी हैवी भारी अति भारी और एक्सट्रीमली हैवी रेन भी होने का संभावना है वो कोस्टल डिस्ट्रिक्ट्स में और कहीं-कहीं जगह में भारी से अति भारी बारिश होने का संभावना है सौराष्ट्र में पूरे सौराष्ट्र में आज बारिश मिलेगी साउथ गुजरात में भी कहीं-कहीं जगहों में आइसोलेटेड हैवी रेनफॉल होने का संभावना है समो न्यूज़ द इंडियन एयर फोर्स ऑन थर्सडे कंफर्म द डेथ ऑफ ऑल द 13 पीपल ऑन बोर्ड द रिसेंटली क्रैश्ड एएन 32 एयरक्राफ्ट the black box of the aircraft has also been recovered, paying tribute to the brave air warriors who lost their lives during the crash on 3rd of June. It said that the force stands by the families of the victims. The wreckage of the AN-32 aircraft of the Indian Air Force was spotted on Tuesday, 16 kilometers north of Lipu in Arunachal Pradesh, eight days after it went missing after taking off from Assam's Jorhat. With an already existing 11 crore members, Bharatiya Janata Party is aiming to increase it by 20% more. BJP President Amit Shah, as national office bearers meet, asked key party leaders to expand the organization in new regions and bring more people into its fold. Panchanan Mishra brings us this report. After the massive victory in the recent Lok Sabha elections, the BJP held the first meeting of its national office bearers at the party's headquarters on Thursday. The meeting was led by party president Amit Shah. Shah said the BJP may have notched up its best ever tally in the Lok Sabha elections, but it is yet to reach its peak. The party also has plans to launch a membership drive with the aim of increasing its members by 20%. श्री शिवराज सिंह जी चौहान जो पार्टी के संसदीय दल बोर्ड के सदस्य भी हैं राष्ट्रीय उपाध्यक्ष हैं वो इस सदस्यता अभियान के संयोजक उनके साथ श्री दुष्यंत गौतम श्री सुरेश पुजारी श्री अरुण चतुर्वेदी और श्रीमती शोभा सुरेंद्रन ये चार सह संयोजक बने हैं अब ये जो टीम है ये टीम बैठ करके जल्दी ही आपको सदस्यता का ये जो एक वृद्धि का जो एक अभियान पार्टी का हर तीसरे साल होता है उसके अभियान के बारे में पूरी जानकारी और उसकी डेट शिवराज सिंह जी अभी एक टीम के साथ बैठक करके शीघ्र ही एक निश्चित समय के अंतर्गत यह सदस्यता की जाएगी उसकी आपको दो तीन दिनों में जानकारी देंगे अमित शाह इज लाइकली टू कंटिन्यू एज द पार्टी इज नेशनल प्रेसिडेंट टिल द ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल इलेक्शंस आर ओवर According to reports, organizational elections will be held within six months, after which a new party president will be elected. The election of 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 the election समाज के सभी वर्गों तक सभी लोगों तक पार्टी के काम का पार्टी की सदस्यता का परिश्रम के साथ आगे बढ़ाने का पूरा विस्तार करना है With three assembly elections by the end of this year it is almost certain that Amit Shah will continue as party president till then With inputs from Panchanan Mishra Bureau Report Rajya Sabha TV India is planning to launch its own space station. ISRO Chairman K. Sivan announced this on Thursday. The ISRO Chairman said that the ambitious project will enable the agency to send more humans to space when executed. It will be an extension to the Gaganyaan project, implying that there will be several phases to the human space mission project. 
The weight of the space station is likely to be 20 tons. ISRO is looking at five to seven years time frame for the execution of this program. The ISRO chief also clarified that India will also not join the International Space Station. We are planning to have this a separate space station. Now we don't want to be part of the other one because we are want our space station is going to be very small and we will be uh, launching a small module and that module will be useful for carrying out the micrographic experiment. The center and ISRO also announced on Thursday that India will send its first manned space mission by 2022 when the country marks 75th year of independence. It will purely be an indigenous mission to monitor which the Gaganyan National Advisory Council has also been formed. ISRO has resolved to send its first human mission into the space. It could be even before 2022 or close to that. An exclusive special cell has been created called the Gaganyan National Advisory Council to monitor the planning, the preparation of this mission. ISRO is also gearing up for India's second mission to moon, Chandrayaan-2, which would be launched on July 15th. The landing on the moon near the South Pole would be on September 6th or 7th on an uncharted territory. And my colleague Navikram Singh spoke exclusively to ISRO Chairman K. Sivan about the complex Chandrayaan 2 mission and the first manned space mission Gaganyaan. Let's listen in. We have with us ISRO Chairman K. K. Sivan Sahab. Sir, right. my first question to you. Uh, how you characterize the whole scientific uh, value of this mission, especially Chandrayaan 2? No, that is, uh, we are characterized that by having testing. And uh, we we have created a first that uh, the the module created a module and test we ensure that everything is right then combine the module then test then like that we have created the the entire uh, system we put together and function and ensure the correctness in the different uh, type of modes like the heli by aircraft this one or taking the whole system to train and see how it's happening. Like that, we are doing that in the real configuration. Sir, how does uh, this mission benefit the common man? Now, this common man, that is uh, basically, it is uh, it is going to give a lot of science. That is like, uh, that, uh, now a lot of discoveries it is going to give, like uh, minerals. And then sometimes you may get that, uh, you know, that the helium-3, it may be useful as a fuel. Like that, many such things will be, discovery will come, that discovery will be useful that for the common man. My last question, uh, Prime Minister Narin Modi has announced uh, India's meant mission to uh, space. Uh, you told us about uh, Gaganyan. Sir, uh, tell me something about more uh, uh, about Gaganyan. To Gaganyan, uh, we are a target, we are whatever the Prime Minister's uh, the, the target we are uh, honoring. And we are planning to uh, create a module to carry three humans for seven days in orbit. And we are planning to have that uh, two unmanned mission by this uh, the, the December 2020 and uh, July 2021. And the actual manned mission is going to be by the December 2021. And in the wake of recent terror attack in Anantnag in Jammu and Kashmir, Director General of CRPF R.R. Bhatnagar met Home Secretary Rajiv Gauba in New Delhi on Thursday and briefed him about the entire incident. The action taken against the terrorists and the present situation in the Kashmir Valley was also analysed in the meeting. Meanwhile, the soldiers who were martyred in the terrorist attack were paid homage in Srinagar. In Wednesday's attack, five paramilitary personnel, including two ASI rank officers, were martyred. One terrorist was also killed in the retaliatory action by the security forces. However, keeping in view the recent attacks, the security of Amarnath Yatra has been strengthened. With all intelligence, with all precautions, you cannot save yourself from the first burst. This is a place in which the public are moving, 
The other transport is moving, everybody is there. It's not an isolated post where it is one to one. We will factor in the, what happened yesterday. We also keep keep inside the previous incidents, and uh, as it and this what has happened yesterday will also be part of our overall planning. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman held third pre-budget consultation meeting with the stakeholders from financial sector and capital markets on Thursday. Issues related to the capital markets, financial sector, non-banking, financial companies and alternative investment funds were discussed. The representatives submitted several suggestions concerning infusion of capital in regional banks, enhanced role of Financial Sector Development Council, NPA's provisions. Union Minister for Agriculture and Farmers Welfare, Narendra Singh Tomar, chaired a meeting with agriculture ministers of all states, union territories via video conferencing on Thursday and discussed the implementation of three key schemes of government, Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi Yojana, Pension Scheme for Small and Marginal Farmers and Kisan Credit Card Campaign. The minister urged all states and union territories to expedite the process of enrollment of all eligible farmer families or beneficiaries in a time-bound manner so that the benefit under PM Kisan for the period from April to July 2019 can be transferred directly to their bank accounts. The minister also informed them regarding rolling out of pension scheme for farmers belonging to the age group of 18 to 40 years. He also requested all the states and union territories to create awareness about the pension scheme. He also urged all states to organize a village-wise campaign to cover 1 crore farmers under Kisan credit card scheme within next 100 days. <laughs> अभियान के रूप में काम करने की आवश्यकता है क्योंकि साढ़े चौदह करोड़ किसानों को इस योजना के अंतर्गत लाभ मिलना है तो कम से कम प्रथम चरण में हम दस करोड़ तक पहुंचे इस हिसाब से लक्ष्य तय करके हमको अपनी गति बढ़ाने की आवश्यकता होगी And the government on Thursday announced a cut in contributions made by employers and employers towards the health insurance scheme of employees state insurance corporation. From the existing 6.5%, it has been brought down to 4%, a move which would lead to an estimated annual saving of around 5,000 crore rupees for firms. The reduced rates will be effective from July 1, 2019. It would benefit 3.6 crore employees and 12.85 lakh employers. The reduced rate of contribution will bring about a substantial relief to workers and facilitate further enrollment of workers under the employees' state insurance scheme and bring more and more workforce into the formal sector. Continuing his interaction with the newly elected ministers in the Union Cabinet, Vice President M. Vinkya Naidu interacted with three ministers in different endearments on Thursday. During his interaction with Law Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad, the Vice President inquired about Society for Applied Microwave Electronic Engineering and Research in Andhra Pradesh. The minister apprised Naidu that the 80 crore worth project established at Gambhiram near Vizag is nearly complete and functioning. Minister for Skill Development and Entrepreneurship Mahindranath Pandey also called on Vice President and informed him about the government's initiatives on skill development to realize the demographic dividend. Food Processing Minister Harsimrat Kaur Badal also called on the Vice President. She apprised him of the developmental activities taken by her ministry. And now the news from the ICC Cricket World Cup. The ICC World Cup 2019 game between India and New Zealand was abandoned due to persistent rains on Thursday. The toss was delayed due to inclement weather 
and in the end it was officially cancelled. This was the fourth such game in the ongoing tournament that has not yielded any result. The points have been shared between India and New Zealand. Both the teams remain unbeaten in the tournament. And that's all we have for you in this edition of News Tonight. Thank you for watching. Namaskar.